Hey guys, here we go with another film study, and today we're going to be doing this one on uh, Inoue Naoa, man, whatever, Inoue, <laughs> uh, on Inoue versus uh, Jimmy McDonald, um, and it's really interesting, I've kind of been like vaguely following this guy's career, uh, I never put out a video on film study for him, um, but he looks kind of like he's missing some things, you know, and he gets by, like, obviously having, like, insane power, right? Um, he has, like, fantastic posture, um, and it allows him to really be quick and hit hard. Um, and, you know, pretty good punch technique uh, as a result of having really good posture, bending his legs really well. Like, uh, he kind of looks like um, how you'd imagine, like, a, an orthodox Manny Pacquiao, you know, and you can just tell just by looking at him that he's going to hit really hard. Uh, a lot of fighters kind of hunch over, you know, and their shoulders roll forward, you know, all that stuff. But um, uh, that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about um, how we got to the knockout. And we're going to be looking at his skills, kinda, and we're going to kind of talk about a few things that he does um, if, that he does well and a few things that he, he doesn't do well. Um, and uh, so a lot of people think, you know, here's the knockout right here, right? How did we get here, though, right? Because it, it didn't start here, right? And uh, it doesn't start here, right, with him trying to time Jamie McDonald's jab. Um, it actually starts here, uh, right here. Him catching him right here, and that's what hurts him, right? And that's how uh, Inoue knows that he, he hurt him, right? And that's when Inoue really goes in and goes at him. So let's kind of watch that again. What do we notice, right? So right away, he's timing him with the left hook, right? Um, we're not going to talk about like his technique or how wide open he is, right? He is wide open with his right hand or for a counter, right? But look at how, um, Jamie McDonald slips to the inside, right? He commits to it, transfers all his weight to his left leg, right? Um, and Inoue catches him with that left hook. And that's what we're going to be looking at. Why does Inoue know that this timing is going to work, right? What is it that exposes Jamie McDonald, um, to getting caught right here, right? Because it's not a wow punch. It's not... He's not um, just catching him. It's not just like, like, they're not just throwing punches at each other, right? Like, that's one thing that I like to talk about on my channel. Like, there was a, a really, really, really funny video of um, Floyd Mayweather making fun of um, Ricky Hatton um, on 24-7. And <laughs> the whole video, like, it's got it's got Mayweather going like this. Ooh, like this. Ooh, ah, like these really funny, exaggerated hooks talking about lucky punches and stuff and how he's practicing them and, you know, but there are no lucky punches, you know. Um, that might not be entirely true. Sometimes they are lucky punches. Um, I've done film study and I haven't, like, done a video on it, but Conor McGregor knocking out um, Jose Aldo, lucky punch, lucky punch. Um, he, I don't think he knew what, what Jose Aldo was doing. Jose Aldo, like, was a level ahead of him, but he was one level too far and he made it look like he was fainting him for the left hook when he was going for the right hand um, or vice versa, whatever it was. And Conor McGregor kind of guessed correctly after being set up perfectly. Anyway, uh, we, what we want to talk about is how we got to this point, right? So we're going to go ahead and go back to the beginning of the fight and we're just going to kind of watch it and point some stuff out. So, um, the first thing we're going to talk about, actually, we're just going to go through the fight, and we're going to talk about the patterns that Jamie McDonald presents to uh, uh, Inoue. And then after that, we're going to kind of go back and talk about the things that Inoue is not doing correctly. Um, because there are some, right? Even though he gets a first-round knockdown or knockout, right? How counterintuitive to say that he did something wrong when he gets a first-round knockout. But um, So Jamie McDonald's coming forward, pressuring him, fainting him, right? And then he shoots a jab, right? Now, we want to pay attention to this jab, right? Look at how far he steps with it, right? Not far, like a, a tiny little step. A lot of fainting, level changing. You know, Jamie McDonald is very active, very active with his feints. Coming forward, coming forward. And look at how far he steps with this jab, right? When he goes to the body, right? Changes level, steps all the way inside, and then pulls back. And pulls back straight, too, right? And then look at these jabs right here. Not a real step, like a tiny step, right? You know, just like an inch or so. But if you go back and you look at this step right here from where his foot is, he steps basically all the way over this Japanese writing on the ground, 
right? And then look at how far he steps with um, with his jab on the second one. He throws two jabs and barely covers that distance. Uh, but most of that is actually laterally movement, right? Not forward. So he's only moving, you know, tiny inches when he shoots his jab to the head, right? And that's something, and again, you can see him. Look at all the distance he covers on his jab to the body, right? And the way that he, the timing works when he's, he's stepping it, right? It's bah. Bah, bah, right but then the one to the body is really slow right he has to change levels in the middle of it and it makes it really easy for Inoue to time him and and we'll see some evidence of that but check this out too right look at how he faints him right and he rolls in front of him right to create space right he's looking to set Inoue up for something and he's hoping that these these feints and these rolls are going to give uh, are going to cause Inoue some problems and give Inoue, like, um, uh, put him in a defensive posture so that he can open up with some offense, right? And again, look at how far he steps with this jab, right? And look at how much slower it is than his other jabs. There's another pattern here, too. Again, when he's nearly against the ropes right here, look at how he's rolling and rolling like this in front of him and fainting him. Uh, and we'll come back to that again. But here's another pattern right here. Inoue sees that it's one jab, right? And then Jamie McDonald doesn't do anything, right? If you go back to the other the other punches, right here, jab, jab, right? But he's not following them up. He didn't follow that right hand up or that jab up. He doesn't follow this jab up right here, right? He's shooting one punch at a time, and um, he's he's telling Inoue basically that all he's trying to do is create space. Right? He's not really trying to hurt Inoue with the jab. As you notice, most of the jabs to the head, right? Let's see, back here. Yeah. They're on the gloves. You know, look at how far away they are. Is that going to land? Is that one going to land? No, these are not landing. They're going right into Inoue's glove. Uh, and Inoue is able to figure out, oh, he's not really trying to hurt me. And he's not setting anything up either because he doesn't look to come back with the right hand. So in this next stanza, right, Inoue sees that that jab is coming and McDonald's gonna take a step back and try to take some, create some space, right? It also just happens that it's right on the timing that Jamie McDonald does that little roll, right? Um, in front of, of uh, Inoue, right? And that's gonna be important for, the, for the, the punch that actually hurt him. But he's able to follow him back and start setting up his offense based on these patterns, right? Only 36 seconds into the, into the round, which is important, right? He's picking up on these patterns and again, Jamie McDonald just creating space. That's not a real jab, right? Look at how far that jab has to go to land. Would he like it to land? Sure. Is he expecting it to land? I don't know. He's not fainting before, right? But Inoue knows that that jab, that there's nothing coming back after it, that Jamie McDonald's is just going to retreat behind and create space and try to move off the line and not stay on the line with him. And then this is exactly where Inoue wants to be, right? So the idea here, right... The idea here is not that, um, um, Jamie McDonald is trying to hurt him. He's obviously, he's looking for the same patterns that Inoue is looking for, right? Um, but after he, after Inoue is able to figure out this little pattern, he's able to close the distance on, uh, Jamie McDonald, right? And these punches aren't necessarily supposed to land either. They're supposed to get, um... McDonald into a, uh, a defensive posture, right? But after he throws those shots, he's, he's able to back him up and close the distance. And this is exactly where he wants to be. Now, I'm going to say something controversial here. This is not boxing, right? This is, they're just standing on the line trading punches, right? They're not, like, uh, Inoue is not trying to outsmart McDonald. All his goal so far is to close the distance, right? Get past the jab, right? And that's what he's figuring out with McDonald, right? So the jab comes out, then uh, McDonald goes to his guard, and then he knows that he can throw punches at him because he's not looking to follow those punches up with right hands, right? Um, also figuring out the jab to the body, right? That timing, and that'll be important later too. But uh, once he gets on the inside, he can just throw punches, and this is where he has... Um, Basically, the mass, maximum leverage of his speed and power versus his opponents, right? Because he's faster, and because he's stronger, um, he has a, a, a very um, a huge advantage against his opponents 
um, being on the line trading with them. And that's the idea. That's what Inoue is looking to do, is be on the line with them. Then McDonald, you know, uh, on that timing, you know, kind of getting caught, um, not not controlling the space, you know, his feints because he, he commits to them. They're very difficult, right? Um, he's not probing. He's not just giving him looks, right? Um, he's so, like, committed to his feints. Um, and it kind of, it makes it easier to time him. And again, right here, you can see that jab when he steps really hard with it, Inoue starts countering him with that hook. And what does that do? Now, Jamie McDonald has to say, oh, so when I jab and I just come straight back, Inoue knows to time that, so I don't want to throw my jab, right? And now he doesn't want to throw his jab to the body because he knows that Inoue is looking to counter that to the body or the counter that jab to the body with the left hook to the head, right? So Inoue is looking to... Uh, before he controls the, or before he he smothers you, and um, um, before he smothers you and stands on the line with you and and you know kind of beats the crap out of you, he's looking to take away your tools to manage the distance, right? And so far, Jamie McDonald's uh, tools for that are the fainting, and um, you know the level changing and the jab, right, to the head and the body. Um, and I don't know what he can do to take away the feints, right? I don't think that he's really looking at that either, but he's looking to take away the jab first, right? Now, this is very important uh, because this is why Chocolatito got knocked out. Um, and I actually, I made a video about it. I I knew that uh, Rung Sivai was going to really put it on uh, Chocolatito after the first fight. I thought that, that uh, Rung Sivai actually won the first fight. I know that's not a, a popular opinion, but... Chocolatito does not look to take away your jab before getting on the inside. Um, he he looks to use the head movement and to kind of slip to the inside, right? But if you can control the distance or control the space between you, like Rungzavai was doing a decent job doing, he wasn't even doing a great job doing it, but it was just enough to stop uh, Chocolatito from being effective. You know, and a lot of people want to say that, that, that's, that that's a product of uh, Rungzavai being too big, right? But it, it was just like... The fact that, probably more appropriately, that Chocolatito wasn't so much bigger than his opponents anymore, you know, um, and that might have been one of the one of the reasons why he had so much success is because he didn't have to worry about people's jabs, you know, at those lower weight classes. They couldn't hurt him, you know, and he could just run in and uh, he could do what Inoue does without having to work around the jab because they couldn't hurt him anyway. But anyway, getting back to the film study, um, and we will go back over some of the stuff that Inoue does wrong um, after this. But look at how he's trying to time his jab, right? Um, Jamie McDonald's fainting. He's starting to um, he's starting to faint back, right? Which is great. Um, but again, look at Jamie McDonald's jab. It's not really a jab to land. It's only a really a jab to control the space. It doesn't look like Jamie McDonald knows how to how to use his jab. Um, well, to set his jab up to land, um, but also to set his jab up to land his other punches. You know, it doesn't look like he's actually trying to fight anyway. Um, even though this jab does look like it's supposed to land. Um, moving off the line, fainting again, in and out. <laughs> um, but um, look at how Jamie McDonald faints him, right? And then rolls back and moves away from um, Inoue, right? And now check this motion out, right? He gets in front of him, right? And instead of fainting, he gives him a roll. He gives him a roll um, and kind of rolls in front of him. Now, one of the reasons why this is uh, absolutely terrible is you you don't roll straight punches, right? You roll um, you roll hooks, right? And you'll let's see how do you explain it? The way that he's rolling, right? It it would be to roll a left hook, but you have to make sure that you see that left hook first. Right. Look at how kind of slow it is and how much he's like kind of standing in front of him. Like I'm not trying to like put him on blast or anything. Right. But um, immediately after that, that roll, and we'll see why it's a bad, a, a bad idea in a second. Uh, he goes to the jab to the body. Right. In any way, you know, kind of eats it, probably not expecting the jab. But um, ooh. Um, but what happens right away? So going back to here, sorry. He's against the ropes. He's looking to create space. And what does he do? He gives him that roll, right? In the next stanza, 
He's getting to be on the ropes, right? He's he's the ring is being cut off against him, and Jamie McDonald's looking to create space. So what does he do? He tries to use that same role to fake in your way out, but he's already used it. I think this is the third time at least, right? It's probably more, but he he does that same role right in front of him, and Inoue is able to say, "Hey, I know what you're doing. I figured you were going to do that," um, and is able to land a hook, you know, on the top of the head, and then kind of rush him, right? After that, right, um, the same kind of thing, um, the little roll right here, right, and to slip or to create space, but anyway, it lands a body shot. Um, but Jamie McDonald stops trying to control the space between them, right? He's not comfortable jabbing. He's not comfortable jabbing to the body, and he's having a hard time even fainting now because he commits to his faint so much that anyway is really picking up on those ideas um, and is able to land that, that first knockdown after hurting him. Uh, and then obviously, you know, the knockout that comes where, again, you know, this is the timing that Jamie McDonald might be throwing a shot, right? But Jamie McDonald's not really able to control the distance. He's not able to get off the ropes. And Inoue is really able to just kind of land on him. Now, there are a couple ideas here, right? So let's kind of go, boom. He kind of eats a shot right there. Inoue does. Eats a left hook right there. Whoops. Oh, no. Illuminati, boom, eats a shot right there. Wait, oh, that was the third shot that Inoue looks, it looks like Inoue eats. But eats a shot right there. Looks like he eats a shot right there. Maybe that one doesn't land, I'm not sure. But then eats another shot right there and eats a bunch of clean shots, you know. Um, and that's that just is a testament not to like Inoue being able to take a punch, but... Inoue not being able to be hurt by, you know, his opponents and understanding that his speed and power are more fruitful than his opponents, right? They, they're they going to, he's going to land a bigger shot on average quicker than his opponents, right? And that's the percent game that he's playing, right? Because you never want to sit on the line with your opponent, right? And just let them throw punches at you. That's that's never where you want to be, right? But it does favor Inoue. Uh, so it's it's not like, the the worst thing to do right like oh i'm faster and i hit harder than my opponent let's just stand right here and bang it out you know um so that's kind of how they get there um it's that jamie mcdonald has a very flawed way of controlling the distance um but he does do a decent job of it and now we're going to kind of go back and look at that and look at these ideas so all the time that um inue is not punching Jamie McDonald in the face, he's losing the fight, right? He wins the fight, obviously. But if we're talking about like a scorecard, right? And Jamie McDonald's not the greatest fighter, right? Um, but if we're, if we're talking about like a scorecard, um, uh, um, Inoue wasn't super active either. All the way up until he knocked him down, he was probably losing the round, right? And that's not to say that Jamie McDonald was winning it, right? Don't get me wrong in that idea, but... But it's not that hard to render Inoue um, ineffective early, right? In spite of the fact that Inoue was picking up on patterns very well, right? So fainting, right? He's able to get Inoue on the back foot. Inoue's trying to figure out timing. He's trying to figure out um, what Jamie McDonald's plan is. Um, he's, he is trying, like, the feel-out round, right? Um, that is what he's trying to do. That's also what Jamie McDonald is doing. Um, but Jamie McDonald, I think, is doing a better job of it in spite of the fact that his he's so predictable, right, that he gives up more information than he gets out of Inoue, uh, which is unfortunate. But if Inoue was fighting like, like Jamie McDonald, as you can see right here, uh, Inoue is the one being pushed back, right? Um, the jabs come out. It's not that hard to move him back. Um, Inoue doesn't have any head movement. He doesn't have an active guard. He's not fainting or probing. He's not using his jab. Um, he's not really doing anything, right? He's just standing in front of Jamie McDonald, hoping to find a pattern, right? Um, and now, that's not a bad thing, right? Lots of very good fighters um, are able to do this, and they make a living doing it, right? Um, capitalizing on your mistakes, right? So... Jamie McDonald making mistakes by using the same pattern over and over again, right? But why is Inoue not making um, 
not making Jamie McDonald make a mistake, right? He's not fainting or probing. Um, uh, he's relying, and granted, he does a good job of picking up on it like 30 seconds or 40 seconds into the round that Jamie McDonald's not trying to fight him. Uh, to be fair, um, that's probably a common theme in his fights. Uh, he probably doesn't have to worry about people really trying to hurt him or bust him up in fights because they're so scary um, or so scared of him. But anyway, you know, because of that, he, he's, his power, he doesn't really have to do a lot of work, you know. And unfortunately for him, when he fights a guy that's really worth his salt, he might, he might wind up looking very average, you know. Um, but again, there's not a lot of head movement, right? No fainting, no probing, right? He doesn't have an active guard, right? And look at how easy it is for Jamie McDonald to get away from these shots, right? Like, not hard. Look at how hard it is for him to get off the ropes right there. You know, not hard, right? In spite of the fact that he uses that same technique and kind of gets caught right there, right? But there are a lot of things that that Inoue is not doing to get information out of his opponent. He's relying on his opponent to give him that information, right? And as we saw against um, um, Jorge Linares, right? It took six rounds for Linares to figure out any of that stuff against Lomachenko because he doesn't give that that information away so freely, right? Whereas like a, a, a worse fighter, a fighter that's not as good, is going to be giving away more information than a good fighter. And Jamie McDonald's not a bad fighter, right? He's beaten a, a few tough guys. Um, he's had a few, you know, probably a few tough fights. He's a decent fighter, um, but he's not the greatest. He's also kind of fighting a little scared, but there are definitely room... There's definitely room for improvement in Inoue's game um, and the way that he approaches boxing. I do appreciate, though, that he understands he needs to take the jab away from his opponents first, that he needs to at least make them worried about throwing the jab um, by, you know, by doing things to follow them, their jab back, right, and make them not as apt to throw it, as you can see right here, all that time on the ropes right here, um, Jamie McDonald doesn't use his jab right there to create space, right? He does right there, but um, then getting caught right there. And, you know, this one, to be honest, like, it could be because of the level change. He could have thought that it was going to be a jab to the body, right? Um, because it because of this, right? So the roll and then the jab to the body right there. It could have been... He could have thought it was a number of things, um, but that again, that's because Jamie McDonald's craft right? The way that Jamie McDonald approaches a fight is not, um, it's not very well thought through. It's not like a great process where he understands all of the, the repercussions of what he does, the information that he gives his opponent, right? Having a rolling system, right? To create space, right? Conflicts with the fact that you're trying to jab to the body by changing levels because they look so similar in that instance. And if your opponent's looking for one, he's going to be able to find the other, you know, and you can kind of cross those, cross those paths, right? Now that's not always bad, right? Say, um, like, um, um, like if you want to throw like a hook to the head, right? You might jab to the body, right? And then hook to the head instead. And it might look a little similar like this, right? You come to jab to the body, right? And then you come in, boom, and you can kind of hook to the head as well. And those look similar, and you might want to cross those lines with your opponent so that your opponent might throw a right hand at you, right? Boom, throw a right hand at you um, when you go to the body, kind of like Inoue was doing here, but not with the right hand, so that you can catch them with the left hook, right? There's different things you can set them up for. But in this instance, crossing those lines for for Jamie McDonald doesn't do him any good. It only serves to get him hurt. Um, so, like... You know, not the greatest craft, not the greatest understanding of how everything that he does in the ring kind of want you kind of want it to fit together, um, kind of like um, like Golovkin has uh, amazing craft. You know, Lomachenko as well. Uh, but as Golovkin as a as a as an example, when he when he's jabbing, right? So a lot of times he'll he'll kind of, you know, move his head a little bit, and he'll shoot the jab, boom, and he'll have his cross block up, right? So if the counter jab comes, he can catch it, right? He'll also tuck his chin under his shoulder, boom, so the right hand might miss. And even if the right hand comes, boom, right? When he comes this way, he's already kind of transferring his weight with his hip when he sticks it out there so he can kind of roll too and get under the shot. 
He just has an amazing amount of craft for his jab and how he can shoot it, boom, shoot it, boom, and duck down and come over the top with the right hand. Just all the things that he does with his technique in, that re in regards to his jab um, set up the way that he does his other pieces of offense. You know, even his hooks, boom, and he can come down, roll, boom, throw that, that left hook to the body or, boom, slide under the right, the, his opponent's jab, right, and then throw a right hand over the top. But um, all of the motions that he makes serve a purpose, right, and that's part of your craft, you know. Like uh, I did a video on Thomas Hearns versus uh, Roberta Duran, and the craft that Thomas Hearns exhibits during the course of that fight is just – Amazing. It's absolutely fantastic. Everything just comes together for him. Um, figuring out a way to keep Duran in front of him, keeping Duran's head up so he can't duck the right hand, um, all the things that he does, you know, and, and that's one of the problems that Jamie McDonald had in this fight is that his craft didn't really serve him very well. You know, it's not very polished. Um, anyway, um, anyway, you know, it's tough to tell uh, because we haven't seen him fight a fighter that we know is a really good fighter. Um, but what really good fighters are there for him to fight at that weight, you know? Um, maybe he'll get to fight, uh, um, <laughs> Rigondeau. Maybe Rigondeau will come back and he'll want to fight and, uh, they can, you know, work that out or whatever. I don't know. Um, that would be really interesting to be honest. But, um, but anyway, you know, um, a decent fighter. Um, I think he's more hype than substance, um, I don't think that he has a lot of the skills to make his make his opponents make mistakes. I think he relies on them giving that information um, away. But he's just one step away from understanding that he he can affect his opponents. You know, in boxing, you're not. Most fighters spend all their time learning how to control themselves, control their speed, control their power, control their. Um, um, Cardio, right? And I don't believe cardio either, but um, um, but controlling their cardio, you know, like working on themselves, throwing a better hook, a better right hand, having better rolls, having better, you know, like Errol Spence is a great example of that. Um, flawless technique, right? Perfect. And he passes the eye test, right? He passes the eye test like like no other fighter, right? Sergei Deryavchenko uh, passes the eye test, you know? He's very... You can follow everything that he does. He doesn't look sloppy, you know, and that's one of the things that people don't like ab about Wilder, right? That he looks sloppy. He doesn't pass the eye test. People don't understand that you are only half of the equation of a fight. Your opponent is the other half. And figuring out how to control them as well as you control yourself or better is more important than having maximum control over yourself, right? Is, is how much control you can assert over your opponent. How, much, how, many, how many times you can make your opponent make a mistake. Because that's going to give you the biggest opportunities to land clean punches. Um, not just your ability to be fast and be powerful and throw a perfect right hand and throw a perfect left hook. Because none of that matters when you stand in front of a professional fighter uh, if you can't land them. If you don't know how to put your opponent into a position where you're able to land those shots. Right? And that's one thing that Deontay Wilder does pretty well um, when he gets into his groove, you know, and why even not passing the eye test, he's able to knock these guys out. Like Luis Ortiz, how does that guy not pass the eye test, right? But how did he beat Luis Ortiz? He outsmarted him. He, he figured something out that he was going to do uh, and, then, and then landed that right hand, you know. Uh, he set him up for it. Um, and getting your opponent to walk into those shots or, or finding ways, clever ways to do that is more important than passing the eye test. Um, which, you know, in way, you know, I don't know if he does actually, he looks kind of sloppy sometimes, you know, he doesn't have his hands up. Um, but, um, for his strategy, you know, getting his opponents to stand on the line with him and just throw punches with him, it's working out great for him. We'll see when he steps up in competition though. Um, if there's any competition at that weight for him in the first place. Um, anyway, thanks guys.